So firstly, excuse my hair. I just washed it so it's still a little damp. If you're wondering like what's going on, <laughs> it's just some water, some leave-in, and some gel. But yeah, so. The College of Worcester which is located in Worcester Ohio and I am in my senior year a political science major Africana studies minor and I have done many many some say too much at this school I've given a lot of energy to this place and was it worth it I don't know so firstly if you're wondering how I chose the school, a little background. I'm originally from Baltimore, Maryland. I lived there until I was 16. And then I moved to Gwinnett County, Snellville, Georgia. Yeah, Snellville, Georgia. I lived there for about a year. Then I moved to Loganville, Georgia in Walton County. And I had no idea what the College of Worcester was. I had never heard of it. Never seen it, never smelled it, never felt it, nothing, nothing. If I don't sound ridiculous, I don't know who this man is. I mean, he could be walking down the street, I wouldn't, I wouldn't know. So when I moved to Georgia my junior year of high school, I had an amazing social studies teacher who taught like AP World or something like that. And in the small time that she knew me, she nominated me for Posse. If you don't know what Posse is, the Posse Foundation is an amazing organization that allows students to go to schools that they typically would have never been to. It allows you to go with a cohort of nine other students. And so you guys are each other's support system. And the goal is you'll get through the four years without dropping out. So that was pretty amazing for me to be nominated for that. And then of course have gone through that entire process. And if you know to know what that process was, because it was semester long interviewing and all this other stuff, I'll do a posse video for you if you're curious. But yeah. So there were six partner schools for Atlanta, Georgia, and one of them was the College of Worcester. And I remember I looked through all the schools, seeing which ones I liked, and I was trying to prioritize like what did I want in a school. I knew I wanted it to be small and intimate because I wanted to make sure my voice could be heard no matter what. I will say I was, Worcester was not my first choice. <laughs> Worcester was my second choice. And that's because like I didn't want to go to Ohio. Like I just, the Midwest life, I never thought that was going to be for me, if that makes sense. What do you guys do for fun? You just, you drive around. What do you, where do you go? You don't go anywhere? You just drive around? But fate played out and um, eventually I was like, yeah, I'm okay with Worcester because I had heard really amazing things from current Worcester students that were Posse scholars that were saying things like the amazing research opportunities, the ways that they were able to create their own student orgs, um, the way they felt like they were going to be really successful post-grad. So that was kind of one of the things that drew me in. Plus, this is an unpopular opinion, but independent study, doing a year-long thesis my senior year that was like the selling point for me. Cause my first high school, I went to three. The first one was an IB school, International Baccalaureate. And we did a personal project our sophomore year. And the feeling of like submitting something that's all yours that you put a lot of heart into, it's like a drug, it's like ecstasy. Like you just be like, mm, I'm gonna feel that again. I'm addicted to success. Yes. Am I happy here at Worcester? Yeah, I am. I am. I am always complaining about Worcester. But if I said I did not love her, I would be lying. Like, some of my best friendships have happened here. Like, the people I'm close to in life attend Worcester or have gone to Worcester. The faculty here, amazing. The ones that have impacted my life have done so in such a huge way. Like, they are my support system. They are my family. And I did meet my boyfriend here. He's cool. He's cool. <laughs> um, but yeah, I am happy here. I love the classes I take. I like pushing myself. I love that it's a liberal arts college. So that means like I have flexibility in the classes that I want to take. I'm a political science major, but sociology, 
communications, some history classes, like everything. Like I don't like being held into one place and the fact that I can just go into like different departments and take a class that seems interesting to me and then apply it back to my other studies. That just hit a little different. I feel bad for people that go to school where the only time they're able to interact with the rest of the academia is through their general requirements. Like do like, you know, math and natural sciences, history and social sciences, like and it's very specific classes, like you have to take this English class. Like I love that we have flexibility in picking the topics that we like. And that the professors aren't rigid, they're always coming up with some new innovative classes to take. My first class here at the College of Worcester, my first year seminar class, it was with this art history professor and it was about like fairy tales, sex and morals and like all this, wait a second, one second, one second. I actually have the book that we read in that class. And that's Little Red Riding Hood Uncloaked. And let me tell you, it was saucy. Like, it just was like, it hit differently. We read so many different versions. Some of them honestly ruined Little Red Riding Hood for me. But like, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it thoroughly. Yes, like, this book, fantastic but yeah I am happy um, I've got to do a lot of things I didn't get to think that I would have the chance to do I've served in a lot of leadership positions on campus I've had a lot of different jobs on campus and that's something that I've enjoyed I've grown a lot so what are my school strengths I think my school strength is really um, experiential learning getting that hands-on experience and though it's a liberal arts college and people think you have to go to like a big state school to get research, the college of has so many research opportunities. Like my sophomore year, I was a sophomore research assistant to a professor where I got paid to assist her with research she was doing, where she was trying to see at like at what age do children like conceptualize ideas about what a politician looks like. So it got into a lot of things about like gender and race. And it was just, it was fun. I liked it. It was my first time having like that research experience because I didn't really know the, the many ways the research looks like. When I hear research, all I think about is like people in a lab, but it happens within every single department. So I enjoyed that. I also got to do, um, it's called AMRI, Applied Methods and Research Experience. And it happens during the summertime, it's for eight weeks. And I got to do consulting. Like I worked on a team of three and we created policy recommendations and solutions for a public benefits issue in Ohio. Like we had state level stuff and local level stuff. We even had the Lieutenant Governor come to our final presentation. So that chef's kiss, loved it, hit different, liked it. What's my number one complaint about my school? So I go to a PWI a predominantly white institution. If you're watching this video because you want to hear about more about the College of Worcester and you're wondering, is it a PWI? Yes, like most colleges in the United States that are an HBCU, a historically black college. And this complaint for Worcester could pretty much go to all other PWIs. Like, I don't think if I was to transfer, my experience would change that much, but how the school interacts with diversity is so interesting. We talk about like racial diversity, um, sexuality and gender diversity, class diversity, like all those different intersections together. I think that sometimes the school has really good intentions, but the time it takes, and this is just an institutional thing at most schools, the time it takes to actually implement things to change the current situation for students at, on campus at that moment, is it's long. It's really long. So you can fight as hard as you want. You can come up with all these recommendations for the school, but it probably won't benefit you while you're there, but it will for the next students coming in. Also in terms, in terms of location, the college is located in a, a very white community in Worcester. So students, we have a mixed relationship with the city of Worcester. We go out a lot, we volunteer, so we have really good connections in some aspects. But then there are times when I'm walking on our main street bell where I'll have people yell, 
slurs and other things outside of their trucks and cars and I just be pretending that they're complimenting me. I'd be like, yes, I know I do look beautiful today. I do look gorgeous. Thank you so much for noticing. Um, I do remember my first year though, like on campus, me and two of my friends were going to this party. It was really, like we were fresh years, first, first years. And we were looking for like the turn up. So we like went to like this basketball house. And I remember one of my friends is black and my other friend was Latina and she's a bit fair skin. And they let her in, but they closed the door on me and my other friend, me and my black friend. And we were confused. But our friend, she came back for us. She was like, what happened? She opened the door and let us in. And when we came in, they were like, the black hoes are crashing. The, the, the black hoes? Sorry, I am a child of God. I'm a child of God. I don't see any, I don't, I don't, I don't see any black hoes here. I don't. Um, but yeah, those, that was like, my biggest experience on like a social setting but then like every day i feel like i get like microaggressed by these white people on campus or even just like non-black people because everyone is like don't be mad at them we're saying really insensitive things it's their background we have to cultivate a learning environment where everyone can be okay to mess up but we'll just teach them how to learn from it <laughs> Cause if you ain't learned in the past three years, you ain't gonna learn. Like I just feel like people want everyone else to hand them education on the platter, especially like people of color take that burden of educating everyone on campus and it's not our jobs. So that's one thing I'm annoyed with. I'm annoyed with that. I retire. I served with the racial and ethnic diversity chair and student government for a year and some change. I retire, I retire. But here I am doing safe zone trainings where I'm developing and facilitating trainings on things like race and sexuality and gender. So maybe I didn't learn my lesson, cause here I am, still trying to educate, still trying to make people want to grow, but we'll see. <laughs> but yeah, how accessible are the administrators and like registrars, financial aid, all that stuff. Registrar is decent, faculty and staff are decent. Specific staff, like financial aid, they do well, but the business office, this one lady, she wanted to catch these hands. I'm gonna keep doing this. But then when I come around, you don't wanna post up. She sent me an email that microaggressed me, where she basically tried to say I was lucky for having the scholarships and aid that I have because I didn't get a complete refund for room and board. When my scholarship through the school is only for tuition. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. Make it make sense. But she thought I wasn't gonna snitch with the way she was talking to me, she was incorrect. I took it to the higher ups. So that's what I do. That's what I do. <laughs> no, it is fun though. Um, I do sit on like a committee with the president of the school and some other people. So like, if you think that I won't tell them how you're treating students, you, you are incorrect. So ghetto, I will you rat you the fuck out. It's I will so be ghetto. Mickey fucking mouse in this bitch the way I will rat you out. Chucky fucking cheese the way I will rat you the fuck out. Remy Ratatouille the way I will rat you the fuck out. In terms of academics, really like it. There isn't like a, a very popular major. Everyone kind of um, does their own thing. So a lot of people self-design or double major or like major and have double minors. So like really like they try to make that interdisciplinary experience. Um, also, we're only an undergraduate school, which means that no one will ever be teaching you who doesn't have a PhD or equivalent. And that's on being a tour guide. So <laughs> if you are ever wondering like, no, uh, we don't have any graduate students here. You are the main focus when you come here for your undergraduate education. It also means that we can be the teaching assistants. We will never teach class, um, but you will get paid or get course credit to assist with like some outside review sessions, uh, give feedback to the professor, multiple other ways that can look. Um, our class is lecture-based or discussion-based, mixture of it plus more. Um, sometimes you'll come in having read something and then discuss and then the professor will then lecture after hearing what you guys thought or vice versa or maybe there's like something else you're doing where maybe it's like activities and applying it to the world experiential learning is huge here at the college camera dying while it's recording not me having to record some other things i'm mad i'm angry 
Is it popular to study abroad? Yes, over a third of students do it in their four years here. Usually it's a bit more popular your sophomore or junior year. You can do a semester or a year abroad. It doesn't have to all be in one place. Maybe one semester is one place, one semester is another place. Or you can you choose a program where you actually are traveling to different areas. Um, we also have some ones that are offered during the summertime where students can actually go with like Worcester faculty to different places. And you'll get like course credits that are outside the school year. So then you have extra credits when you come back, if that makes sense. So like my friends went to Hungary after our first year of entrepreneurship course. There's one that usually goes to testing in Italy every year. Um, there's one that goes to London for theater. Um, they were supposed to do one that was supposed to go to Buenos Aires, Argentina for a film and history course, but that just didn't happen because COVID. Campus life. House food is decent. Like the dining hall, all you can eat, go crazy, go stupid. You will never get bored. When I start to complain about Lowry, I just remember the feeling I have every time I go home and I'm like, oh, I can't just have endless cereal. I can't just have a sandwich buffet. There's no pizza station. There's no basics. There's no grill. There's no international. There's no dessert. There's no options. So yeah, plus there's like cafes that also have really good um, sandwiches, soups, salads, and like other snacks that are on campus. What kind of things are there to do in your school's hometown? I go downtown to the cafes. Most of everything I do is food related, but like, yeah, they have like this farm thing called Ramsey Farm every fall semester that's fun to go to. You do like Midwestern things, Midwestern vibes. Yeah, there's usually like food trucks and stuff happening, movies, do some hikes drive around, look at the corn, look at the fields. <laughs> I don't know. Um, is it easy to get around campus? Yes. Yes, you, you, you'll never get lost. And if you do get lost, it's because like, you stopped walking. Just keep walking, you'll see something you recognize. It's like the north side, the south side. On the, on the north side, once you get to Bell Stores, you're leaving campus. But on the south side, once you get to Drug Mart, you're leaving campus. So you're very kept in by like a, a Drug Mart, a McDonald's, and then a Bell Stores, and across like a Papa John's. Like that's it. That's it. And then the other ways, is, there's other, like, yeah, you can get around. There's good wayfinding. Could be better. We're working on it, but it's good. How did you describe your fellow students? Um, talkative. Privileged, but trying their best. They want to change the world in one way or another. We gotta give them the opportunity. But sometimes they be forgetting where they come from. Like, we get it. We get it, hun. You know a lot about this one topic and you want that to be your personality trait. But it's okay to say you don't know about this other topic. We all fall short sometimes. But no, overall, student body's good. Are students here friendly? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know what it is. Like if they chose to come to the Midwest, they're gonna be semi-friendly. Like, I I know me personally, I just be walking up to people and be like, hey hon, like, what's going on? Like, would you like to have a meal with me? Would you like to be friends? That was me my first and sophomore year. I stopped doing that because I'm not trying to make no new relationships before I graduate. That's just a little too much for me. So then like are internships available? How do you find them? All those good questions. We have really good research opportunities here through the school. Like if I have not said that already earlier, we do. We have an office called APEX, which stands for Advising, Planning, and Experiential Learning. And that's on being a tour guide. I know, you're like, how does she know these acronyms? How does she know them all? Cause I talk about them a lot during the summer in previous years. I'm not touring this semester, it's just too much for me. I'm stressed. Um, do employers recruit students on campus? Yes. We have this like program called Handshake where you can also find like job opportunities or inter internship opportunities. And then what kind of hands-on or practical experiences have you had inside and outside the classroom? So I mentioned AMRI, the Applied Medicine Research Experience that I did where I was doing um, consulting. But also I'm taking a class right now called Communicating Public Policy, which is in the Communications Department, the Political Science um, major. And we're actually working with 
a city member and we're creating like talking points for them. Um, we're creating like a handout and stuff to deal with like the homelessness issue that's happening in Worcester and trying to get a low barrier shelter here. But yeah, overall I give Worcester a 7 out of 10. It's a really great school. It will challenge you academically. You will have a robust social life. Um, diversity issues, you're going to find them every single place you go. Does Worcester try? Yes, it does. Do you want to be at a school where at least they acknowledge like they're trying? Yes. Um, so yeah, I enjoy it. I like it. If you want more specifics on just like one of these things that I can make a secondary video, just comment down below and tell me like, just talk about what it's like being a black woman at a predominant white institution or just talk about specifically the internships experiences or just only talk about like my major or something I don't know my major is fun it's fun it's cute um but yeah that's all I have today and I hope that you guys have a wonderful start of your week depending on when you're watching this hope your week is good hope your next week is better and yeah it's always a pleasure thank you for watching and I don't like telling you what to do but if this is your second or third video you're watching of mine and you haven't subscribed yet what do I gotta do what do I gotta do let me know what do you want to see what's gonna make you go and push that subscribe button what do I need to do to take you over the edge let me know let me know and I'll get back to you thank you peace out baby